So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to type in sheets.new and it's going to bring up a brand new uh, Google Sheets uh, program here. Um, you can change this to, uh, you know, from untitled spreadsheet to um, the maybe the title of the lab that you're doing. Uh, so if I'm sorry, if I'm just going to do position versus time graph uh, for constant velocity car. That just lets me know that whenever I go into my Google Docs or my Google Drive, I can find it quicker. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to plug in our or type in our data. So we want to create a position versus time graph. So remember, time is going to be on the x axis. That is our independent variable variable. So that's going to be the first thing that we, you know, that's our first heading. And then the second thing is going to be our position. Typically, we'll put this in meters, but we'll just write this in centimeters for right now. And then I just go in and type in my data. So 0, 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Now, you're going to collect the data by whatever means. It could be, you know, a force meter. Here we were using uh, spark timers and we measured the distance between them, between the dots. So 2, 4, 7, 9, 11, 12, 14, 16, 19, 21. All right, so there is my position versus time data. I can clean this up a little bit, especially if I want to, you know, transfer this into a document. I'm going to center all this. That's something you don't have to do. I'm just like that. All right, so now the important thing is we want to make a graph from this data. So the importance of putting the headers in is that once we have those headers in, it'll label the graph for us. And remember in physics, we want to make sure the graphs are labeled so that we know um, what our axes are. So if I highlight everything, then I'm gonna go to the insert menu. And if you, there's two ways you can do this. So go to insert chart or you can find that symbol. Um, typically it will be there, but you can see I have to click the three dots. Um, it is the one that looks like a little graph, but to me, the easy way, if you, cause if you don't have that, um, but it didn't pick up my data. So if I go to insert chart, all right, there's my graph. And the good thing is it's already recognized this as a scatter plot. In physics, we want to do a scatter plot. We don't play connect the dots because a lot of times our data is not going to be very nice looking. It's not going to be like an exact straight line. All right. Most of the time, it won't be an exact straight line. Some of the times it will, but most of the time it won't be. All right. So as you can see here, because I highlighted the headers, it's already labeled my graph. All right. So position versus time. And it also is labeled my axes, position and time. Now, I want to pull out the trend line. I want to get what is the, the line that represents this data. Okay, that is a trend line. Um, or in the, and so what I want to do is I click customize, go to series. Okay, and everything will be like default. They, they already know that you're trying to figure out the trend line from the position. So if I scroll down to the bottom of this kind of drop down, I'm going to select trend line. So now it's put the trend line on. And I also like to make the, the line a, little, a different color and a little bit thicker. So I know that, that is my trend line. I also see it has a little, uh, has a little uh, opacity. So I just try to make it a solid line. Now, I don't know what the equation of this line is because I haven't labeled it. So if I click label, use equation. Now what it has done right here is that it has given me the, the equation that represents that line. And because this is a position versus time graph, the slope of this line, the one that is associated with the X value right there is equal to the speed or velocity of my car, right? This is our, this was a constant velocity car. 
um, that we hooked up to a um, spark timer, which created a motion diagram. And so the velocity of my car was 20.5 centimeters per second, right? Because I did my position in centimeters and my time is in seconds. This 0.182 is a Y intercept. So I was saying I have an initial position of 0.182. So you have to remember that this is a trend line that represents our data. Um, and so we just, we can either ignore that, okay? Or we just understand like, yes, it's gonna have that 0.182 um, the, for our data. The thing that you can also do, if you remember in certain, um, in algebra two, if you've already taken that, you probably have done the R squared or the, the coefficient of restitution, I think is what it's called. But that just tells you how close to the data or how close to the line your data is. So if I click that, I get a 0.995 for my R squared value, which tells me that's pretty good. Um, that trend line represents that data pretty well, right? We want that number to be one, okay? I can go in and also edit this if I want, especially I'm gonna put it in a physics document. This is a math, math representation. All I have to do is double click on it. And so I know this is my position. So X equals, um, so this is like X of T equals 20.5 T plus 0.182. Let me turn that R squared value off. Okay, now it's changed from a trend line to a custom label. But that's okay because that custom label does have our trend line on it. Okay. Now you also see that there are different uh, types of trend line. This is a line. You may get a, a parabola. So if you have a parabola, you're going to select polynomial. And the default is polynomial degree two. That is a parabola. Okay. Which is, which is fine too. Right. Um, that just will change our, the way our, uh, our graph looks. All right, so if you get stuck, keep coming back to this video, right? Or you can just simply ask your teacher, they should be able to help you with this.